This is Empowered Human Academy. Welcome home. That was a pretty big moment to shift from, I need permission from people around me to like, I just need the permission from myself. This is about love. This is about light. This is about the idea that you, you have everything you will ever need. And this life of yours, this is where you grow, you expand, and you remember who you really are. I'm Abe. I'm Isaac. In Empowered Human Academy, we join with humans of all kinds to feel the inspiration that can only come with empowered living. The stories you hear today are unique, but the energy, the energy you hear today belongs to you too. So with hearts wide open, let's begin. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Empowered Human Academy. Today we have our friend Francis McLeod, and we are so thrilled to be diving into what I feel like is going to be such a an incredible conversation. I'm always so curious about what's in your brain uh, because of what comes out and what you create. So I'm so excited for you to be here today. Thank you so much, Francis. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. It's been a really good day. Got to get a lot done in the kitchen, which I feel like sets me up well for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. If there's a metaphor there if I've ever heard one. Um, We, we begin each of these conversations with the question of identity, like intrinsic identity, when you're not presenting, um, although presentation may be a part of it, but when you're not presenting, when it's just you coming home to yourself, what words of identity do you choose for who you feel you really are? Hmm. That's a big question. Um, mm, That's like a very intimate question too, because I think I always end up trying to like help people understand what I do professionally. Mm. And then I take some shortcuts. Um, But I would say I am an artist Mm. and that has a lot to do with how I experience the world, like take it in and also how I then process and output. Um, And I, yeah, I'm a human being too. Mm. So I think that has been a really important thing to claim in the last few years as well. Mm. I'm very interested in all of these pieces, like the shortcuts and the experience process output and the humanity part. But let's start from the last thing you said first. <laughs> what does being human mean to you? Being human means that you like participate in life and mm. you like are a friend to people. You are a daughter, you are or, like a child, mm. you are an aunt, you are, you know, like I I should use my own identifiers. I am all of those things in relation to other people. And yeah. I take those things seriously. Mm. Um, and then also I get to be myself. And yeah. so I also take myself seriously and try to be patient with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Like hearing the, hearing, hearing you hold both of those things as important, like the way you relate to other people, um, plus who you are actually, can you, can you talk about that? Like how, do, how does like briefly, how do you think about, like I am Francis, I'm all of these things for different people. And also I am myself. Like, how does that whole, how does the whole feel to you? It's feeling better than it's felt in a while. I can tell you that. Um, I think that's been a source of a lot of inner turmoil just to figure out, like, I think for the longest time, I just wanted people to tell me who they wanted me to be and like, what was going to be the most effective version of me. So I was Mm. very like about the input and just like, yeah. How do I respond yeah. to that and give yeah. people the best thing that they can ask for? Sure. Um, it's very achievement minded. Um, and so it's been a transition to say like, rather than what do you think I should be like, mm-hmm. who do I think I should be? And mm-hmm. like, what are the parts of myself that people have reflected back to me, but that I am responding to and feeling some conviction with, and mm-hmm. then how do I live as that person rather than an idea. Mm-hmm. Was there a moment where you were like, oh, this kind of needs to flip or change in my life, owning and and living as yourself versus uh, only kind of living for other people or other people's perception of you? It's sweet of you to think it was like a one-time event. It's constantly. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like once a year. It's yeah. every three years. It's like, oh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. No one mm-hmm. is asking me to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think just like, the word permission has become really important. Mm. Um, I did the artist's way a couple of years ago for the first time. I'm happy to do it a thousand more times in my life, but um, there's like a whole section about permission and like they kind of break down like who your mentors were and like your mother, your father, your, Mm. um, your teachers, like, and talking about who gave you permission or like who allowed you to become who you are. Mm. And I realized that like all of the people had given me a hundred percent permission. It was me who was like, mm. 
holding that back from them or just like believing that they didn't really mean it or yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to be disappointed. Um, and so to kind of shift from, I would say that was a pretty big moment to shift from, yeah. I need permission from people around me to like, I just need the permission from myself. Mm -hmm. Totally. Can you share a little bit about the artist way for those of uh, the listeners who don't know about that? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually written by a screenwriter, which is so interesting. Um, she wrote this, it's like a 12 week course. Sometimes people do it in groups. I did it at the start of the year and just a bunch of other people I knew happened to be doing it. But basically there's different themes each week. You, the only like hard and fast rules are that you every morning write three pages without stopping and you don't edit them. You try to like catch yourself before your morning editor wakes up. Mm -hmm. And then you also take yourself on artist dates and just like, um, that could be as simple as, well, it could be as simple as going to a museum by yourself and saying this is a priority, but it could be also as playful as giving yourself $5 and going to the Dollar Tree and buying a bunch of like weird craft supplies and going home Wonderful. and making something. Cool. Um, so the, the range I think was really helpful for me and just this like, she's kind of a little woo woo, but she's also very practical. And I think mm. it was written in the nineties. So it's not mm. even like oh, wow. a new concept. Sure, and sure. so- um, I just love the idea of revisiting it and yeah. being curious about what comes out of it. Like at the beginning mm -hmm. of the process, I was like, I think that I'm going to kind of think about this, this throughout yeah. this process. And by the end of it, I was like, on a totally different level. I like just yeah. thinking about something entirely different. Yeah, so. that's cool. That's, really this cool. is the first yeah. I've ever heard about the artist. Really? Way, so thank yeah. you. I'm excited about this. Oh, I would do it with you. I All like, right. I'm down. Like I, I, it's a really cool structure um, and you can take and leave from it yeah. um but it's a really beautiful thing cool i'm super intrigued um yeah. i want to I, I want i'm deeply curious <laughs> about how you think about process and what that is for you because you you've there have been a bunch of things already in this conversation that have touched on yeah. that like the idea of shortcuts mm -hmm. right at the beginning the idea yeah. of like a loop like there are there are things that you re-realize over time um mm -hmm. you said revisiting the artist's way uh, you talked about like as an artist you're experiencing and processing and outputting mm -hmm. There's the whole achievement oriented mindset. What is, what is process for you? What is, what is your process in the world? I'm figuring it out. Yeah, it's totally. slow. It's, it's slow and it changes and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I, I want to approach this well. Um, the, the process is rooted in permission. Okay. So it's rooted in curiosity. It's rooted in, um, it's rooted in curiosity mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like following what is interesting, mm. um, and being gentle with myself along the way mm -hmm. and giving myself time. Mm -hmm. I'm making this sound like it's like a really breezy thing. <laughs> um, but it's not, I fight it a lot. Mm. Um, and I want to give like maybe an example to make it a little more concrete. Sure. Um, so we met right before the pandemic really took yeah, off. We yeah. had like a wonderful trip together. I, we really like got along so well. And then I feel like we've connected at, at different points throughout the pandemic. Mm. Um, the pandy as it were. Um, <laughs> and I was really struggling through that transition mm. of how to like be present at a long distance. So like my friends were, were like doing zoom calls and I had the hardest time paying attention. Mm. And so I started, um, painting during phone calls. I remember painting on some of our zoom calls mm -hmm. and just being like, this is how I can participate with this many voices. This is, yeah. this is what's possible and accessible to me. And it was honestly one of the first times that I like gave myself permission to actually paint just for myself or mm. to draw or make Ooh. visual artwork just for myself. Yeah. It was like too pleasurable. It was like too too inefficient. Like there were like all of these reasons why I like wasn't doing it, mm -hmm. even though I did it professionally, commercially, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so it's been really interesting to just take that. I had so much time. All I had was time. Mm -hmm. And to say that like, well, then let's just explore this. Like if, if this is all I have, it's time. Like, how do I like remain inside of the work that I'm making long enough to mm. see an outcome that I enjoy mm -hmm. versus just being frustrated that I'm not making work that I want yeah, yeah. or, um, and so through that, I think that I've, I've just 
felt so much better when I have that kind of like creative exploration play Yeah, yeah. at least once a week, but it should be more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also just saying like, this is kind of interesting work. Like I'm going to look at it. I'm going to think about it for a while, mm-hmm. which you can see on the, um, this is my left. Um, just like putting up the things that I make and yeah. saying, I'm going to like think about them for a while and I'm going to, I don't have to have an opinion yet, but yeah. we'll just see how I feel in a couple of days or a couple of weeks. And like, my gut is usually pretty good. And mm-hmm. it's like the thing that I liked at the beginning. I like, oh, still like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just seeing how that might apply to other work that I'm making. Um, I have clients that I work with. I have friends that I want to collaborate with. I have like spaces that I want to fill in my home mm-hmm. and f- kind of then saying, this is an interesting point of view. Like, why don't I apply some of these things I've been thinking about to the projects that are part of my livelihood? Yeah. Um, And it's a long, that, that is a long process. So like I have noticed over the years of working independently that it takes other people a couple of years Mm. to like hire me for the things that I am interested in. And that's really hard because mm. I want to say that like, Oh, I'm excited about this right now. Hire yeah, me to yeah. do this right now. Um, but for whatever reason, it takes like a little bit for things to get traction. Yeah. And then in a couple of years, it's so sweet then to get a brief from a client project that includes a personal project that I made two years ago. Wow. And it's like, Oh, I love this when this came out, but I don't think anybody cared. And so then to see it um, show up has taught me a lot about patience yeah, and a lot yeah. about, Cause I think for the longest time, I just felt like if nobody's responding to it immediately, mm-hmm. then it's not valid. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not liking it immediately, then it doesn't matter. Totally. But actually saying, Oh, I can live with this for a while and I can be curious in the meantime yeah, and yeah. we can just go with it and not be so like clenched fists about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a game changer. Hmm. What does it, what does it feel like? What's, what's the change in, in your experience to like be more open with, like, t- like timeline and other elements that I'm hearing you talk about, like not not needing the thing to be like done or liked or fully understood in the moment. Like what has that done for your daily experience as as Francis, as yeah. a creative, as yeah. an artist? Yeah. yeah, all these things. Well, it definitely goes back to just being a human and okay. saying that like, oh, I want to be a person. And like, yes, I have these goals. Yes, I have these desires professionally. Sure. Um, but I have these people around me who expect me to show up as a person. Mm-hmm. And need me to do that. And I need them to do that too. And Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I think that that has given me the patience that I need because Mm, it's like in the meantime, I'm going to be like invested in my real life, um, Mm, or like the life that's outside of my creative work and, and just kind of recognizing that like, this is, these things are intertwined. Sure. These things take time Yeah, and I'm going to be the better version of myself if I give it time. Totally. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm hearing you right. It sounds like you're like you're saying that withdrawing focus from one area to kind of let it gestate while you focus on a different part of your beingness. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And saying that like that happens just with the creative process in general sure. is it's yeah. is like I need time away or I need time yes. for my brain to like incubate something. I need sure. to go on a walk. Mm-hmm. I need to do my dishes. I need to totally. um, have a conversation. And then mm-hmm. when I come back to it again, I'm fresh and I have a better editor inside of me. I have like a more sure footing. Hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Being an artist uh, in the, in the beginning of our conversation, you talked about being an artist and a human and I we're artists too. And you know, do you, have you ever struggled or what's your relationship to, um, you know, you do art for, for your job and for, you know, clients and stuff. And also that doesn't, when you're operating as a, as a human, you're still looking and perceiving the world as an artist. Like, what is it like to be an artist and a human at the same time? This is a very vague, big question, but like in your experience, how, what's your relationship to those two things and how has that like impacted either your own human lived experience outside of work and how has it impacted your work? Like bringing your humanity to your work. Does that make sense? It does. And I'm so scared because it's such a big question. Mm -hmm. Um, But no, I think it's, I think I just want to, I want us to like have a good conversation approaching it from the right direction Um, because it's my favorite topic. Yeah. Mm. Um, Or it's a topic I can return to over and over. So um, it's like the heart. Okay. 
in my experience, it is, it is very hard to be an artist mm. in the world. I don't think that the world is super friendly to artists. Mm. I think um, we're so efficiency minded. I think we're so like economy minded that it's very hard to say, this is worthwhile. Like this mm. is the thing that I should do with my time and resources. Um, so to, just to say that from the outset, that I just don't think yeah. that our environment tends to be very friendly towards that. Yeah. Um, so then to say, I also want to participate in the world in a successful way. Like I, mm. I want to be good at my job. Yeah. I want to like work on projects that are interesting and move me forward. Yeah. Um, I grew up um, not really knowing any people who worked as creative professionals. Mm. My perceptions of an artist were either you will be a starving artist who cuts off his own ear due to alcoholism and depression, mm. or you will be an art teacher and tell kids, please stop trying to make bongs out of ceramics. Mm. Like this is a ceramics class. Those were the two extremes got it, got that it. felt possible to me. So I didn't know about graphic design until I was in high school. I did, you know, or I just didn't have a sense that there were options or possibilities. Yeah. And so it's been so rich and rewarding as an adult to meet so many creative mm. artists, professional, like people who have made a successful livelihood out yeah. of their thing that they're interested in. Yeah. Um, so I think kind of like arriving into that possibility has also been really helpful. Mm. Um, but I feel like I've had to look a lot of places and mm. um, I've, you know, just been so curious about what it looks like to be a female, mm. what it looks like to, to be a woman, to be an artist, to be a human, to be a participant, like all of those things. Um, it's been a, a confusing journey but the the ultimate outcome is that like I'm the only person who can decide what's most important for me and that like there is not going to be a perfect mentor a perfect role model um there are so many people that are interesting to me there are so many people that can teach me but I am not going to be able to be our friend Frida Kahlo and I don't want to be um or you know like totally um so just kind of letting go of that dream or like expectation has mm. been really freeing yeah. um, and makes it feel like now we can just figure out what it means to be myself in this world oh, instead yes. of something else entirely. I love that. You talked a little bit about showing up as a woman and an artist um, and you have worked with a lot of big commercial brands, you know, Facebook, Chipotle, like those are some of the things, some of the brands that just... Um, come off the top of my head, but like, what has it been like being a woman in that space that could be, is it male dominated? I have no idea. Like what has, what, what has your experience been like? Um, I would say that the people at my level are pretty equitable. Like it's, it's pretty, um, across the board interesting, but I would say there aren't a ton of mentor figures or mm. role models or people who are at their like at a, at a healthy point in their career at age 50, who are women uh, in okay. my industry. Sure. Um, that could be because people want to have families and women take on that role and do it really well. And mm. that means that you give up opportunities within your like perceived industry. Mm. Um, but also I think that women are really multifaceted and mm. capable of multitasking in this way that like the older I get, I'm just curious about so many more things. And so at this point, I'm like, I could not focus powerfully on one sector of the graphic design industry. Hmm. There's too many other things I want to do. Cool. And so I think now it's kind of opened up into like, oh, I'm very curious just to see like what women are up to and like yeah. how they have navigated those things that seemed so complicated to me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like most of them are just like, oh, I just... It was one day at a time. Mm -hmm, I just mm -hmm. did the next thing. I just decided in the moment, this is what the next thing is. Totally. So. And and being quiet enough or like grounded enough to decide that that is good for the next mm -hmm. thing to do, right? Like you were talking about. It's not like, yeah. you know, it's not like we can be 100% free to call. We don't want to be. I mean, we shouldn't. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. want to be at least. <laughs> um, but how can we learn from the different people? I, th I find it really interesting that you said like there aren't a lot of like mentors later on in their careers in your sector. Um, I just find that fascinating hmm. because it's so easy to be like teaching profession or, or, or law or, you know, finance. There are so many people who've been in this, but art is just interesting in that space. Hmm. I, 
I'm speaking specifically about the track from like graphic design, Mm -hmm. branding, illustration, um, advertising. Yeah. Um, So I don't want to, there's a lot of that I don't know, but no, totally, totally. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about curiosity and I want to see if we can pair that subject with internal conversations versus external ones. Like a thing, a thing that I know about you is that you're very like you're strong and powerful and effective in your communication. You're from what I observe, you're very good at like foreseeing the point that needs to be delivered and getting there well. Um, does that make sense so far? Oh, it's very generous. I'm like I should write this down. Well, it's, I mean, the, it's, <laughs> it's super clear to me. Um, so, but I'm curious about that paired with like the like the intrinsic openness and curiosity itself, right? Like versus like the the path of I know where I need to get to versus I'm wide open in my curiosity um, and how that relates to like one's inner journey versus one's external journey. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe maybe the question I want to ask is like as as you are like engaging in life as yourself and listening to yourself and what you want, how do you or do you at all bring other people in on your journey of curiosity? Does that mm-hmm. sound like a thing? Yeah. Well, I think you also pointed out that those things are actually kind of at odds with each other because curiosity is like a meandering path Mm -hmm. and being an effective communicator is pretty direct. And it's like, I know where I need to go and here we go. And so those two parts of me are at war. Mm. Don't worry. Um, (laughs) Tell me more. um, Well, I, I think I know what I need to do when I'm in a room with people or, or I guess it really depends on the room. Um, and so, if I'm in a professional setting, I'm not going to engage my curious brain or I'm not going to like speak from that place. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what has made certain friendships really enriching. It's Mm. like, you guys are friend group. Like Mm -hmm. those are people who are very like, let's just see where it goes. Um, and, and feeling safe enough in those spaces to, to try and, Mm -hmm. and be that as well. Um, I would say that my curious brain is very private. It's, but I also am like such a verbal person that I can't help but tell everybody about it. Um, and so I have had to learn that like not everything needs to be shared. Um, or that was a, that was a 15 year ago okay. revelation. Um, but more recently it's just like, Oh, how do I like, I think my instinct has been, I think this is so interesting. I want to share it immediately. I want to like as quickly as possible, take my curiosity and just like give it to whoever's closest to me. Sure. And um, my poor patient parents, like honestly, what, <laughs> what's, what saviors? Um, my, my poor patient husband, I feel you. I mean, yeah, it's like, <laughs> hi guys. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, what has been like very tender has, is like being, slower with that Mm -hmm. and being curious about curiosity Mm -hmm. so meta Mm -hmm. and just saying like what about this is just for me and like what would it mean for me to experience this for myself and to say that like this is sacred this is intimate and special and my instinct is that I want to share it with someone but actually it's a bigger gift if Mm -hmm. I like let it sink all the way in Mm -hmm. and then later it might become something like, and that's kind of what's happening with me starting to make painting work available to people that I know, Mm -hmm. um, where it's like this, I've been with this long enough that now I feel that I can like appropriately bring it to you that Mm -hmm. when I communicate about it, it won't feel so vulnerable. It won't feel Mm -hmm. so, um, so tender, tender, but it's just like, I can say like, these are my thoughts about it. I've taken yeah. enough time to have words for why I think it's valuable, why it is important to me. And I feel now safe enough that like, you can't really rattle me or like mm-hmm. the, the, the response that I might get doesn't matter anymore or it doesn't matter as much. <laughs> totally. Totally. That's so real. That's I also feel I, I don't know. That's exciting. It makes me um, excited to like Let's let's talk sooner than five years from now, but I'm excited to check in in five years and see what has come forth in well, that time. That makes me think of like the the journey of confidence, right? Like I don't mm-hmm. need you to love it because I am in a good place with it, right? Like same mm-hmm. thing with my health journey. I'm like, I love compliments, yeah. but I don't need them anymore like I did four years ago. And yeah. my trainer told me, 
I've said this before on the podcast, but like he was like, when you lose 100 pounds and people start congratulating you, it will not mean as much as it did to you or it won't carry as much weight with you than it did four years ago or five years ago because Mm -hmm. you've it's your journey. It's so it's so ingrained in who you are because you've been there the whole time that nothing or no one could make it less than if that makes sense. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I love that. Mm. Um, what are what do you let's backing up a quick sec. Um, what do you feel amazing about right now? Like about about these days? Like if we back up and look at like the 72 hours surrounding this moment in time, what do you feel amazing about? I feel amazing about um I feel amazing about my home mm. and that I get to occupy this space and that I have made it beautiful for Mm. myself Mm. and for whoever I get to welcome into it. Mm. So I also feel amazing that I have a couple of vaccinated friends that are on their way to the airport right now. And they're going to spend the weekend with me. That feels extra sweet now. Um, And also just feeling so amazing about just relationships in general, but like Mm. my relationship with my boyfriend and being like, Oh, I feel so thankful. Mm -hmm. And um yeah yeah Just appreciating how sweet life is right now cheers yeah it's Thank cool you. like hearing hearing elements of that that are connected to like the humanness that you talked about at the beginning yeah um as long as you've mentioned space and because like for for y'all to dear listener if you are tuning in mm-hmm. on youtube you can see the space around us um before this call you briefly described what was going on in this room and why do you mind relating that again here really quickly Oh, yes. This is my workspace and I spend so much time in here. Um, And I have one wall that is like a bunch of framed gallery. It's like a gallery wall of like a bunch of work that's very inspiring to me. Mm. And for the longest time, I thought that that was just going to be it. Um, But I have been hanging up work that I've been making on the other wall. And it's very nice to like swivel between the two, um, depending on what I need (laughs) and say that like, oh, I'm very curious about this today. Like, I wonder what else I might make that feels like this. Or like, these are people who have made these things. I love them. They like encourage me. I'm so thankful for their friendship. (laughs) Like, um, so it's a very cozy, like hug of a room. Mm -hmm. Love that. What makes you confident as an artist? What helps you become confident as an artist? Mm, I recently read that the most powerful an artist can be is when they are both spontaneous and secure. (laughs) Is that right? Spontaneous and secure. Um, But secure being related to confidence. And so I might be getting the word wrong. It's a good thing I'm not also citing the source. Um, But just saying that like, oh, I know what I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. I know what a line looks like when I draw it. I know how I approach shapes and forms. Um, And that gives me the freedom to be spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Like that gives me the freedom to like make something that then surprises me. Mm -hmm. Um, I recently painted this little nook in my living room. It's like this architectural detail that when I first saw this apartment, I was like, one, I have to have it Two, We're going to do something cool in this nook. Um, And I finally did it. And the way that I, I mean, this goes back to our conversation about process earlier, Um, but in the past, I probably would have taken a photo of the space. I would have like mocked it up. I would have made a mood board of like all of the references Mm -hmm. that I want it to feel like. I would have just like really planned it. Yeah. And instead I was like, I'm just going to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to paint directly onto the wall with like one color because I want it to be easy to paint over. This is a rental. Mm. Um, And just coming up with like, this is what the flower shape is going to be like. Mm -hmm. It's going to be based on the size of my hand. Mm -hmm. I'm going to like roughly map it out with some chalk, but mostly I'm just going to like feel it out and go with it. And it was chaotic. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) It was so fun, but there were also days of working on it. It probably took me like a couple weeks off and on. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple times where I was like, this looks insane. And I don't know if I like this. Um, and then there were other times where I was looking at it and I was like, it's probably the coolest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And to like, allow room for both of those things and now to have it finished um the it like it's like this arch that goes up and so you can stand inside of it and just be like wow she really did it huh um (laughs) um but it was the first time that I like mapped out what 
the program of this artwork would be yeah. and then just like let myself go yeah mm. ah it's so cool i love how this ties to like the discussion of the space that you're in right now like these are now mm-hmm. two very strong examples of in what i see is inhabiting your process mm-hmm. that's super cool well and it's the going back to what you were talking about is uh the the theme of permission like giving yourself mm-hmm. permission to kind of flow through i mean you you were at one point probably not happy with it, right? And giving yourself permission yeah. to even feel that or even take the next step to complete it. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just saying, and the permission of, this is the first time I've ever lived alone. And so I previously have shared my space with other people and have spent mm-hmm. so much time, whether that's my workspace or my home life. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I have to like make sure that other people feel accounted for and in, or or I feel apologetic about my mess, sure, or I feel sure. any number of things. And so this experience of living alone has just really kind of like ripped all of that off and been like, mm. you're making excuses. You need to get to work. Mm, totally. ah, holy parallels, Batman, <laughs> like t- t- taking care of your internal space and process and mm-hmm. your private curiosity and, and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really cool. Uh, uh, I'm just overwhelmed with how cool that is. Um, what do I want to ask you next? <laughs> Um, I, I want to hear, if you don't mind, a little bit more about the idea of like inhabiting your space. And I recognize that those are words that I brought to the table. So I want to hear how you think about like the fact that you are physically surrounded by things that point to your process. Did you do that on purpose? Was that kind of like a gut thing that just happened and you, I don't know, like how, how do you think about all that? Right. It's a good question. I, this space is much about that because I do work in this space every day. Yeah. Um, the rest of my home, I've kind of like let it evolve. I'm mm-hmm. a constantly moving things around mm-hmm. um, and um, just really trying to like make it as pleasing as possible to me mm-hmm. on that given day with mm-hmm. what I have. Yeah. And so often at the end of the day, my boyfriend will be like, what'd you do today? And I'm like, oh, I am. Um, I just moved things around. I was like, oh, I moved things around. It felt really good. And he's yeah. like, you do that almost every day. Yeah. Um, but it has such an effect on my being. Like mm. I, I feel more at home. I feel, yeah. um, I feel like I'm taking care of myself yeah. or taking care of whoever might come into my space. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it is very intimate to then invite people into my actual process. That's a brand totally. new thing. Yeah. Um, but people have been really kind. Nobody's been rude about it. So <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Praise um, God. <laughs> this I'm I'm okay, cool. So the, the thought that like gained clarity real fast as you were speaking is that um okay, let me begin that sentence over again. Um there are there are things that we work to understand internally, and then there are things that we like express and then we have all the pieces on the table and we can move them around and kind of see them in the light and see how they fit. Um tell me about the things that you need to get outside of yourself to understand versus the things that you can process internally. And I don't know if that relates to, to art, artistic expression or curiosity or anything like that, but like, what do you need to to manifest to get out into the world versus what do you hold inside until you understand and then bring out? Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I do, I think process everything outside of myself. Oh, you do. Okay, cool. (laughs) Um, But very rarely does that involve other people. Actually not true. Any friend of mine would be like, you processed a lot of that with me. Um, <laughs> but I would say that I do a ton of writing. Um, I, I sometimes talk to myself mm-hmm. um, in a very like normal, non-crazy way. <laughs> and um, I, and then I draw a lot. I have sketchbooks. I have like just like archives of like me trying to make sense of yeah. m- what's going on. Sure. And those things sometimes I share with other people. Mm-hmm. Often I do, uh, often I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think what's been so confusing about all of us being on social media, all of us being so connected to each other mm-hmm. now more than ever, mm-hmm. like just feeling like, do I owe this to other people? Or like, if I made something today, like, should I share it? Or if I like, um, who should I share it with? Mm-hmm. And um, I've really, really struggled with that. I don't know that I have like a square answer about it today even, mm-hmm. but um knowing that I am processing everything almost as an, in ways that I consider to be artifacts. Like okay. how do I decide what is for other people and what is private and also what yeah. should just be totally discarded and never looked at again. Sure. 
Are there, are there any like general heuristics you apply to that sort of thing? Or is it always like a, let's see what feels right today kind of thing? Um, I would say that I've shifted. There was a period of time where I was trying to be as output driven as possible, or it just okay. felt like that was what was expected of what I was expected. expecting of myself. Oh, okay. Okay. And so to shift from that into like almost everything now is private until I decide that it's right for other people. Okay. So I, um, I draw a lot by my, for myself, it might become something for work later. Mm -hmm. It often does. Mm -hmm. um, I will write for myself and I might then have that conversation with someone later, but often yeah. it's really helpful for me to say, Oh, you know, I like worked through that on my own and mm -hmm. I don't need that in a way yeah. that I did before. Yeah. So I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, but totally. What's been um, a moving moment in your art journey? Like a moment that just kind mm -hmm. of like wowed you or changed you or impacted you in a way that really stands out in this moment? I have one that comes to mind. Um, but like a very like impetus related one. Um, when in 2011, I think I showed work for the first time in an art show hmm. and um i submitted a like a proposal i made the work um and what i decided to do was a collaboration with my older sister um and she at the time was studying linguistics um and loves wordplay and has so much fun um with wordplay, which is great. And I was very interested in typography and lettering at the time. It was at a point in my schooling where I was just like, this is what I want to make. Um, and so we worked together to make this piece. I made it really large and like a pain in the ass to install and to like everything about this situation oh, no. was like, out, like I bit off more than I could chew. Um, and it was like the most fun I ever had. Mm -hmm. And getting to like go to that opening party um it was called type force in chicago hmm. they had they had them over and over and it was just the most fun night of the year in general to get to hmm. see all these creative people um and i noticed that i was so much more enthusiastic to share this work because i had done it with my sister like i i could say like look at how smart and funny she is or like yeah. look at you know like that the skin was not just mine and um and so i think i've kind of tried to chase that for like since then hmm. of like, Oh, I want to like challenge myself. I want to make something that is irresponsibly large, but I want to like do it with someone with some people like mm -hmm. with, with people who I admire who have totally different skill sets. I think that a lot of times or for the long graphic designers tend to like buddy up and then start studios together. Okay. And um, so it's like, you're like looking for your creative partners to do something with. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And that experience was so early, but it really taught me that like, Oh, I actually want to work with not people who do the same thing as me, yeah. but people who have incredible weird brains about something else. Yeah, and like, yeah. I want to work with them. Yeah. And so I think that like that has really shaped what I've taken on. Um, and then, I mean, it allows me to be very infinitely curious. It allows me mm -hmm. to like learn more about something else. It allows me to also like collaborate with someone who I wouldn't otherwise get to have that like yeah. intimate friendship with. And mm -hmm. I love that you asked that question, Abe. I like hadn't thought about that in a while. That's really cool. I have a picture from that on my wall. Super cool. From that installation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Neat. I, the collaboration is something that I was curious about like and so I'm, I'm i'm glad that this that this came up um is that then something that you like are you do you actively seek that that out or does it happen naturally in the course of your professional work like how do you how do you how do you come into contact and then collaboration with people who are all over the express like creative expressive map mm -hmm. it is it's like a slow thing you know okay. what i mean like good things take time totally and so so much of that is rooted in friendship mm -hmm. and just like 
following along with people along the way, like connecting at different points, Mm -hmm. being active friends with people. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just coming to a place of like, Oh, I think we should make this together. And I like feel really good about it. Like I'm excited about it. You're excited about it. Let's do it. Um, But that doesn't happen immediately. And anytime I try to force it, it's not, it's, it it usually doesn't work. So and that reminds, um, that reminds me of what you were talking about earlier. Like I put this piece of work out and three years later, someone was ready to work with yeah. that piece, right? Like mm-hmm. and having that patience in between. Is there any element of that that's intentionally casting out into the future? Like, are there are there things that you're planting now that you think may come to, like they, they may emerge from the earth in several years from now? Or is it always like, a, oh, I'm surprised right now by what the thing I did three years ago has turned into? Does that make sense? It does because I wish I have never been someone with clear goals. And so I like, I'm sort of envious of people who are like, I know what I'm doing and these are the steps. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm sort of like, Oh, I, I could be down with a lot of stuff. I yeah. think this is interesting. Totally. Um, so I would say for the most part, I'm usually kind of surprised. Cool. Um, but I'm so supr- it's more, do you think that delight is the better version of surprise? Ooh. Like that it's like, oh, I, I knew it. It's familiar, but yeah. I'm still thrilled. Sure. Um, surprise is like, I can't believe it. And this totally, is like, totally. this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know if you can tell by the way I'm physically lighting up over here. I identify super yeah. hard with just yeah. like the delight of life's expression in the moment and how you can mm-hmm. trace those threads back to, I mean, back as far as you want. Um, but I don't know, like the, the, like to, to, to wax philosophical for a sec, the, the fact yeah. that the expression of life ends up being so inarguably beautiful at every moment is shocking to me and seeing how like we all get to be a part of that, like almost an unwitting part of that, um, mm. is wonderful, right? Oh, it is. Um, if you were approached by someone who's an artist and who's like really good or um yeah just really good at what they do and they're like uh i don't have confidence what would you tell them in terms of encouragement because i feel like a lot of artists are so hard on themselves yeah the hardest That's a stereotype of course but um yeah i w- what would you tell them based on your journey in your trusting and your confidence in your mm-hmm. permission i have had people ahead of me give me confidence because Um, I think they sort of like modeled a couple of things. They modeled that, um, we are often looking for like the harshest critic version of our friend with the best taste. Mm. Um, and so like, even the people who I admire, I like want to impress them, but they're so happy with anything that I make. Like Mm. no one is as hard on ourselves as we are. Mm -hmm that can be true. And then also like by giving myself permission to take my work seriously, I am giving you permission to take your work seriously. And if you don't take your work seriously, that messes with my perception of how seriously I should take my work. Does that make sense? It's reciprocal. Like, um, I, my work is interesting and important and meaningful. Mm -hmm. And, and your work is important, Mm -hmm. interesting and meaningful. And like, if that's not true of you, then like, I don't know, it like shakes my belief in that for myself. And so mm-hmm. I think we kind of like all hold each other up in that of like, mm-hmm. does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It yeah. Does. I've never heard, I've never heard a, an encouragement kind of circle, circular <laughs> kind of. Like we all need this for ourselves and each other. So it's just that reminder then, right? It's like, mm-hmm. no, actually we do. We need your light. We need your talent. Mm-hmm. We need you to trust yourself. Mm-hmm. Here's the invitation. We need you to be patient with yourself long enough to see this to the place that you go. Ira Glass has the famous quote of like our taste outpacing what our abilities are of mm-hmm. like the 10,000 hours. Like I need, I, I, I know what's good, but I can't quite make it yet. Yeah, yeah. And so that is such a helpful encouragement for anybody who's starting out or just yeah. like trying a new discipline of yeah, just yeah. like, please stick with it. Um, if you think it's interesting. Sure. Do it. Sure. Yeah, totally. What, what else, what, what, what else? Um, you, you talk about, you talked about like being curious about like an increasingly broad spectrum of things over time. Um, what, what else, right? Like your like graphic design, I know is a thing that you do regularly um, and impressively. What else are you interested in? I am very curious now about spaces and okay. honoring the spaces that we inhabit and how like 
beauty is part of functionality. Mm. Um, there's a, there's a balance there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so just to say, what would it mean to surround myself with beautiful things? What does it mean to create beautiful things for other people to like have in their daily lives? Yeah. We've experienced this like increased desire for comfort in our homes. And um, I just feel like that's a really powerful space to embody. Mm -hmm. um, so very curious about space and making objects. Um, I've been painting on things that I've found that I like. I told you about my nook, but I also recently painted on a red leather chair that I found at a thrift store for $40. Go on. Very cool. Maybe I shouldn't have told you how much it cost because I would love to sell it. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like it in my own home. Um, but I've also painted on a couple of lamps that I found, you know, just like, mm -hmm. oh, I like found this object in the world and it said something to me. And so I brought it home and then I lived with it for a little while and I decided that I wanted to put something on it. Yeah. And I did. Um so that is feeling really fresh and like really good. Um, cool. And I've been again with it long enough that I can talk about it publicly with mm -hmm. you. Cheers. Yeah. So. Is there, is there significance in going from like, like a blank piece of paper to a two, two dimensional construct to having like a physical thing that you can like touch in three dimensions, um, something that's expressing itself to you that you're then extending with, you know, by painting over it. Is there significance there at all? It's almost easier to start with something that already exists. Sure. Like the blank page is so big and wide and it could mm -hmm. be anything. That's another reason that painting has seemed really intimidating to me. Mm. Um, but to say that like, this is um, an object that has these planes that I yeah, could yeah. cover with something mm -hmm. um, that has felt. Mm. Yeah. And then it's also a practical object in your home. It's sure. not just a, like a stagnant um, piece of paper. It's, yeah, yeah. It almost sounds like a collaboration also, like this object came to me communicating some things and here's then what we might make together. Hmm. Thanks for saying that. I had not, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, when you hear these two words, what initially comes to your mind? Alive and art. Hmm. Alive and art. Um. I really like hope that that means anything. I hope that that could be anything. Cheers, yes. Um, so yeah, believing that the food that we're sharing is art mm -hmm. or the time that we're sharing is meaningful, like just being awake and alive in the moment, in whatever it is that you're doing or working, like I think that's the point of view of an artist that makes us so... Mm -hmm like valuable to the world around us is mm -hmm. like, Oh, I'm, I'm like receiving all of this as mm -hmm. all of this is art. And I'm going to like bring that to the world. I don't, just, mm -hmm. that's, I love artists and that's why I feel like I'm surrounded by creative people. But totally. Yeah. yeah. There was no wrong. That was an amazing answer. I was just curious what, what that sparked in your brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are, okay. So before we wrap up, I've got one like last question. Um, what mm -hmm. do you, um, and if this applies, maybe it doesn't. Um, what do you like understand cognitively that you don't yet understand uh, in practice? Everything. So much. I Okay. <laughs> um, no, I think that often I like, ha or I've been realizing that there are things that I say are true, but take me so much longer to learn mm. or like cliches that I'm like, that's a cliche. And then mm. five years later, I'm like, that's fundamentally true to my existence. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I feel like That's even, yep. even like as silly as I remember, I started saying YOLO ironically back when everyone was saying it. I was mm -hmm. like, "That's so funny to be someone who just like wholeheartedly is just saying YOLO." Mm -hmm. um, and then like later, I was like, "But you do only live once." Yeah. And that's also how I learned that like anything you do in satire eventually becomes true. Like, it's just, it's a slippery slope. Um, so uh, I appreciate that as a thing to keep it in the back of my head. Be careful of satire. Sweet. Um, so careful. <laughs> final two questions. Um, the first of those final two is what does an empowered Francis look like, feel like, how does she behave? Like what's going on when Francis feels empowered as shit? Okay. Well, um, an empowered Francis is like taking good care of herself. Mm -hmm. Like the fridge is full. Mm -hmm. Um, she has plans for what 
the food is going to be for that day. Yeah. Um, but also an empowered Francis is pretty balanced. Um, mm-hmm. like going on a walk and like paying too much money for coffee every day. <laughs> and also taking time to like make something for myself and also answering my emails in a timely fashion. So like yes. it's it sounds like very holistic, but I think um only like 20% of that day is actually profitable from like a line item perspective or from like a business owner perspective. And so it's been really hard to say that like, oh, my output is probably much lower than what I think it should be, but it's ultimately going to be better if I protect it. Yeah. That's really cool. I've never heard of it like that. That's cool. cool. That, That sounds like, that sounds like a transition made in confidence. Yeah. That's really cool. It, it's been good i'm like i'm like it has not been that confident it has just happened yeah due to life circumstances sure, due sure, to sure. like oh we lost i lost most of my work last year like sure. it just disappeared overnight and yeah. so adjusting and saying okay if these are the chances that i have to like learn what it means to be most fully myself like if yeah. i can't do this now yeah then i'm never going to figure it out and sure. that's i mean of course there are multiple opportunities but yeah sure. i just have really kind of taken that to heart totally that makes sense and i think when i said confidence it was less of the like you like one knows what they're doing going and they're going to construct the thing that they envision and more of like like almost the confidence that comes with an unattachment to outcome like i have this opportunity to do it this way let's then like it, it, it's maybe it's choosing confidence like we're going to take the ingredients that we have and see what happens we can make with it don't you think that choosing confidence is like the secret sauce though, because we're all waiting on confidence to exist in ourselves naturally. Yeah. And it's actually going to come from the choice that we're making and the people mm-hmm. who are around us who are also making that choice or believing we can make that choice. Yes. Um, yeah. I wish that I thought about that more readily with the word confidence. Cause I always am like, I don't know that I have that much of that, but but, the, but I can try. Yes. Oh, it's a muscle, boo. It's such a muscle. <laughs> totally. Accessing the choice. Yes. Yeah. That's, I'm really happy we hit that note. Excellent. Yeah. Final question. What do you know for sure? I know for sure that it's really good to be a human. Like it's, mm. there's a lot of richness that's available to us all of the time. And I am so curious about all of it. Hmm. I want to be a good one. Ah. <laughs> ah, I love it's that. Beautiful. Um, you are wonderful. Thank you for the things that you do and the and the choices that you're making. Um, as mm-hmm. as somebody as as another human who exists out there in the world, um, I I appreciate and respect and in my own way and emboldened by the choices that that you make and the art that you do put out in the world and hearing more about the the process and how like a thing that you choose to reveal may have been like in the works inside of you for a long time or maybe not but knowing that you are um purposefully arting is a thing that i (laughs) i think that i really appreciate um thank you for sharing yourself today for my gosh for those of you who um are listening go follow her work on instagram and go check out her work on her website you're you'll just be blown away um, and now you know a little bit more about the artist behind the beauty that you're going to be seeing online. So yeah, thank you so much, Francis. You're incredible. And we're so grateful for this time that we've had with you. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. What a treat. What, right. That's, this is life. What a treat. Cheers. Yeah, it's the until, best. until next time, friends, we'll see you soon. This podcast is the work of Lightword, our company, named for that toward the light direction which informs every single thing that we do, including money. Which means, like everything else, the way we earn revenue is not based on industry norms. It's based on what feels deeply right and aligned by passing through the door that feels like it has more behind it, not less. And the way we keep this podcast going is all Lightword. It's pay what feels good. It's an exchange of value between you and us. We're keeping conventional podcast advertising totally out of this. And here's how pay what feels good works. We give you this episode because it feels good to do so. And you consider, honestly, what number of dollars this episode is genuinely worth to you. I do not care if that's $3, $1,000, or literally $0 and a heart emoji, as long as that trade genuinely makes your day better. And the energy there is the entire point. That is what we're building our business on. No advertisers, no selling your attention, just you and us, trading value in a way that builds us both up. 
So whatever the number, when you're done listening, head to empoweredhumanacademy.com and hit the pay what feels good button. We use this policy across all of our company's work, and I'm really excited to bring it here to the world of podcasts. This is us voting for the world we want to see. Thank you for being here.